Hey guys, welcome to Flat Stop King. Hey, today is all about salmon on the Blackstone griddle. Throw a couple vegetables down. Today is all about healthy. You guys stay tuned. So as you guys know, you guys see the videos that we post. I get a lot of comments. How do you keep cooking that food and how do you keep like not gaining weight? Well, the ironic thing is, is not necessarily about gaining weight. It's how much weight we've actually lost. Uh, so if you go back to like our very, very early videos, you can see the face change and all that stuff. Uh, typically when we film and we create an idea that's super bad, we either prepare for it, i.e. eating healthy before it happens and after it happens, or we might film like basically two videos in one day and then let the rest of the week ride and uh, eat healthy as well. But my wife has been on a salmon kick. And I actually don't even like salmon until recently when I went on my health kick and I was like, I was not necessarily forced to eat it, but let's just say I enjoyed eating it more and more. And now we actually have it all the time. So I thought today, let's put salmon on the griddle. That was perfect. Your hat's crooked. Okay, good. <laughs> Little that way. There. Oh, feels like it's crooked that way. Nah, a little that way. All right, everything is extremely basic today, but let me show you what we got. We got asparagus, we got some uh, zucchini, uh, some squash, some tricolored peppers. I always have these available for my snacking. I eat those instead of chips. And then I've done it in a video before, but it didn't get a lot of views, so a lot of people don't realize it. I tease a lot of times, I just use uh, like um, spices that I blend up myself. I like playing around with spices. I think it's pretty cool. Just common ingredients. So I'm trying to go over like a little idea for a rub that I commonly use and my thought process behind it. Uh, so I need to get some vegetables chopped. I need to get my salmon portioned out. It's me, my wife, and my oldest daughter, my youngest daughter, sticks her tongue out at it. And then other than that, it's a downhill slide because all we're doing is cooking vegetables and salmon. Easy. And healthy, low but healthy. carb. That's right. All right, we got our vegetables cut up. They're gonna take a little, uh, probably a little bit longer than the salmon, so I'm gonna get those started. A little avocado oil on the sides. And just, I'm just gonna start cooking them all together. All right, that one head of garlic that I sliced up, that is gonna be the idea. This is what I like doing. Um, garlic typically burns, so I don't put garlic in the mix when I do fish. So I like to finish it with like a garlic butter and lemon uh, juice. So what we do, we kind of treat it just like a steak. When you bathe it in a steak, kind of the same idea. So we're gonna melt the butter, melt the garlic, and just bathe all that together. So got a nice chunk of salmon. We got the center cut today. We prefer the skin on, it's up to you. Just some nice uniform pieces. If you happen to get a piece of salmon that's uh the tail starts running this way so you gotta and the belly the belly starts thinning out where they take the rib cage out the rib bones if you do that you gotta be careful i would almost cut your salmon in half this way and make smaller pieces because you're going to end up overcooking the belly side and undercooking the top side or vice versa it's almost like a piece of chicken you definitely don't want to be pounding out your um your fish but you guys get the idea. Uh, the correct size of portions when you griddle of them are very important, especially for good salmon. All right. Just been moving the vegetables around, just trying to pick up a little bit of that oil. Kind of uh, creates a little tackiness on your vegetables. Then just come back and hit it with a good all purpose seasoning salt, pepper, garlic, whatever you got. Whatever you like. Let that rest do its thing. All right. So this is the tip slash trick slash tick that I like to show you. So when you're seasoning uh, meat and you're trying to come up with a blend, what I try to imagine is the portion size of the meat, okay? If you put all this together, I'm gonna say the circumference is pretty close to the size of the plate. You get that? All the area combined yep. looks like about the size of a plate. 
So what I like to do, you have to imagine how much of an ingredient you would like. Do you like it pepper heavy? Do you like it chili powder heavy? You understand? So this is the idea. Just take the black pepper. Ooh, that wind Ooh, is blowing. Ooh, it's windy. Our seasonings are gonna blow away. All right, I'll try to make this last then. So I'm thinking about coming back over it just like this, like two passes, okay? Same thing with salt. Salt is typically, you know, if you want to cut your salt, you can. But I'm just trying to eyeball it. So the idea is basically. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's making it in the video. <laughs> All right, now that we've got the styrofoam plate out of the way, we had to restart. So this is the idea, right? I'm just thinking about seasoning the actual meat itself. Like I said, a little pepper heavy, just like that, okay? Same thing with salt. I'm imagining just going over the meat just a couple times. There's probably a good one. That's probably a good two and a half right there. All right, I'm gonna use cinnamon. And I mean, basically I'm thinking about just like, a, just a dusting, okay? Chili powder, I might come over it one good time. Make a good thick coat. Well, we got dill. Same thing as the chili powder, a little onion powder, maybe a light coat, crushed red or uh, red cayenne pepper, extremely hot, obviously. So I don't want to put a lot on there. A little cumin. I like the smoky flavor aspect of it. Light coating of that. And then we'll come around with a little paprika for color. I thought we had chili powder. Oh, we did chili powder. You did chili powder. If someone tunes in right now and they see see you seasoning a plate. I told you <laughs> I told you we're eating healthy. They're gonna think you're crazy. <laughs> that's how you eat healthy. All right, look, just blend it up. And that's how you get a good blend, right? That's I mean that's kinda like you add what you like to add. With that seasoning and the wind blowing, you just gotta hold it high, about a 90 degree angle and just let it kind of like float. The good thing is you can season the ins you can season the inside of it. Oh man. This is also a good way is not to uh, waste seasonings. You know, when you're trying to blend your own seasonings, you don't have a lot of waste. For that much salmon, looking about a about a tablespoon of butter, about a tablespoon of uh, avocado oil. I'm gonna go skin side down. I mean, I'm gonna go flesh side down first. That's your presentation side. It helps char your seasonings. So you wanna char the seasonings because then it's more of like a blackening effect or? I like it, yeah, I like it like that. You know, sometimes, I feel like the most anti-oven person there is. Like, I, I, I just believe there's so much other ways to develop flavor. So I feel like if you don't have a chance, if you have the chance to char your food, I just think it comes out so much better. So for me, I like the charred effect. We're looking at about 400 to 440. There's 452, 411, 406, 435. So right there about the low 400s. Alrighty. About six to eight minutes later, you should look something like this. I do have my dome out. This is gonna help speed up the process. Now, the internal temperature of the salmon is something you guys have to determine. We like ours more on the medium side. See that color I'm talking about? Woo. Leave just a little space in between them. Let that heat rise through it. And give it another five minutes at least. All right, there you go. So when you dome it, it definitely picks up the steam. It definitely picks up the heat and that happens a little bit faster. You guys see that nice browning, that nice color. That's what I'm talking about. All right, go and turn off the griddle. That's done. All right, I'm gonna use the side of the griddle to the advantage. Take a good couple tablespoons of butter. 
whether or not you eat the skin, that's up to you. Put that garlic in there. Whoo, it smells good. I can just bathe all that salmon and that butter. Lemon juice, garlic. Just take them vegetables off. Maybe just kind of do it family style. All right, we got those vegetables. Don't forget that butter on the griddle. All right, guys, there you go. Salmon on the griddle done our way. Just flakes right off that skin. You guys see how moist it is. Fantastic. Lemony, buttery, garlicky. Those spices are just like an after note. I'm telling you that cinnamon, cinnamon, my wife was like, what the heck? I'm like, you don't use it a lot. You don't need a lot. It just does something to it. Mm. Doesn't get the same reaction though as a good old smash burger. <laughs> But you know what? Although completely different, it's just as good. It makes you feel good about yourself. It makes you think about clean eating and gearing up for that Western burger we're about to make with homemade buttermilk, fried onion rings, smash burger style with cheddar cheese, barbecue sauce, brioche bun, pickle. <laughs> oh yeah, we're on the salmon, all right. All right guys, there you go. Salmon on the griddle. We did a great little uh, vegetable side dish. Love my little mixed up vegetables. If you guys are interested, we have a join button down below. It's a membership program. We thank each and every one of you for taking time for doing so. Check us out on The Griddle Group on Facebook is where we talk about griddles, talk about healthy eating, bad eating, you name it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. Thanks. Okay, let me try. Let me try. We want salmon? Yep. Yep. Mm. I know, that won't fit my mouth. <laughs> Oh, that's juicy.